Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to the fourth and final round of Locals feature matches from my Locals that took place on the 12th of November. I know it's been a little while since this was filmed, but I uh, wanted to get it out before the uh, the new format is officially in effect. And uh, it's going to be an, in quotes, exciting new format, right? Lots of great changes being made that I'm sure everybody's really looking forward to. Um, I decided to skip round three for this event mainly because there's just more tier and it was a very uh blowout match very one-sided match and uh, this matchup seemed a little bit you know more interesting since we have uh dinos on the right here piloted by the one and only big killer jeff himself in fact i might make the uh the title tier elements versus jeff we'll see but we're gonna see my man johnny here on the left pop off with milling 13 13 cards to uh, well, two bouts of five from Megiddo and Kelbeck, and then three, of course, from the Shiren. We're also going to see the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation trap card being used here in conjunction with the um, the Blue Turtle. I don't know what its name is, but it's the, the, the Crystal Beast Aqua. It happens to be an Aqua, right? How perfect of a fit. You can put it back into the deck just by fusing into Kit Kalos because it is, again, an Aqua. And we're going to see Kit Kalos resolve here on a new chain, resolving another tier name, because you have to imagine, you know, once you mill 13 cards, you probably hit a tier name or two. And there's that really cool field spell that everybody's very happy is now banned in the graveyard. And I also um, wanted to double check this uh, video, too, before I posted it, you know, since we're so close to the new list going. In fact, uh, no Mystic Minds actually end up getting used in this video. So, yeah, there you go. Um, so we're going to see him fuse into Kikalos and into a Garura. And, you know, milling 13 wasn't enough. We're going to go for a casual mill 8 now. 13 is a little too much, right? So why not just limit ourselves to 8? Also, reminder, guys, check out the coldest water at the link below. If you guys are planning on buying any gifts this holiday season for any of your friends or family, good place to look. And you can use my affiliate link down there to uh, support the channel uh, while you shop and check out using that link. So, milling 8 there doesn't really find it too much outside of just a Soliac. All of that milling for really not so much in return. You see Exchange of the Spirit, too. This is also another reason why I wanted to show this match, because my friend uh, Johnny's build of Tier Lament is not really like your standard build of Tier Lament. He's playing uh, some tech cards in here as well. Like the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, the Crystal Beast monster to go along with it. He's also playing Gravekeeper's Trap, and he's also playing... Of course, um, the uh, Exchange of the Spirit Trap. I couldn't think of it for a second there. So we're also going to see him go for a Diviner, Fuel Finer. It's going to dump a Medora. And then we're going to see him get a Shiren on field. And then we're going to see him go ahead and Synchro for Elf. And I think he just normal summoned the Shirens. I don't think he normal summoned yet that entire turn because that... Whole play started off of a Shiren pitch. And then we're going to see him use a Mudora or a Keldo here. Looks like he's shuffling back the... And you can actually, you know, interesting thing here is you can actually shuffle back six cards. Up to six cards here since Exchange of the Spirit is in the graveyard. Um, which is kind of insane. And... Uh, unless I'm seeing things, I think he actually might have forgotten to banish the Keldo. We're just going to see him end on Baron and Elf. Now, normally, like, this is the one bittersweet thing uh, about Tier Lament to Shizu is, like, they do a ton of milling, right? And if you're playing a deck that, like, you know, milling a bunch of cards in your deck doesn't feel great, but at the same time, it, like, kind of sets your graveyard up with a bunch of effects for you to use on your turn. Like an example, like Speedroid, like you're milling Speed Recovery, Speedroid Names, Hounds, Duplicates, etc., etc. These are all effects that you can use um, to your advantage next turn, but they're never letting you keep those cards in your graveyard because all the good cards are getting put back and everything else is staying in the graveyard. Um, very, very bittersweet. So we're going to see our Dino player here lead with Gold Sarcophagus. That's going to go ahead and banish the Giant Rex. And of course, as a result of being banished, it will summon itself out. And then we're going to see him activate Fossil Dig. I believe I see a copy of Havness in hand for our uh, tier player. Of course, we know that was there. It was added. I think I also saw like a, a copy or two of Triple Tactics. So we're going to see him add the Oviraptor. 
and really not like the craziest of end boards right here just elf and baron but of course it has the potential to turn into a lot um he has pearl rhino which can act as an interruption he has medora keldo access and of course havness has the opportunity to turn into anything and then elf bringing out merly for you know mill three opportunity so we can at least mill six here to beat a Calback or a Nagito. We can mill even more to ensure more fusion summons. Very insufferable deck to play against. Trust me, I'm, I know. We're going to see him normal summon. Soul Eating Oviraptor attempt the effect. It's going to be negated by Baron. At least attempt to be negated by Baron. And then in response, we're going to see Forbidden Droplet card that I'm uh, kind of surprised to see in anybody's main deck right now. It doesn't seem that great. Especially, like, it really depends on what kind of deck you're playing. If you're playing, like, more of, like, a rogue deck or, i.e., anything that isn't tier right now or sprite or flanderies, it just seems like going minus to essentially imperm something. When Dark Ruler feels slightly better. But I don't know. I guess it depends on whatever deck you're playing. And it uh, looks like we're going to see him pitch a Quatlas. And... I think now we're going to see him use Medora. I think he just there remembered to banish the Keldo from the previous turn. So he's just now using Medora, which cannot let him return six. I thought it was six, but it lets you return up to five if Exchange of the Spirit is in his graveyard, which it is. I think earlier I said six, but I just double checked and it says five. Just kind of broken. Extra two cards getting shuffled in. And basically just emptying the graveyard of dinos right now. Um, so I have to find another way to turn the uh, UCT online and the Quatlas did hit the graveyard but it was shuffled back in unless this just happened on resolution I'm assuming so like I, I don't know if Quatlas should have just gotten its effect there or not um, I need to uh, double check uh, let's see here. If this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. Oh, it wasn't sent by a card effect. Okay, that makes more sense. So it looks like we're going to see him activate another Keldo, since he had definitely multiple copies in Grave. And he'll recycle some tears to the deck. That will trigger Pearl the Rhino, popping the Obi Raptor. Didn't even need to use Elf for Merly or anything on his turn. We're just going to see him start his turn now by activating Diviner, or well, Elf to bring out Diviner. Diviner effect, uh, sending a Guido and milling five, and, well, milling ten since he had a Kel back there. Well, no, he can actually, no, it's because Exchange of the Spirit is in Grave, he can mill even more, which is insane. I keep forgetting about that. The Exchange of the Spirit in the Graveyard putting in absolute metric tons of work right now. And uh, we're just going to see a whole bunch of things resolve. The Dino player at least getting something out of it because they get their Quatlas hitting the grave, this time actually being sent by a card effect to be able to search uh, the UCT. Or not the UCT, the uh, Double Evolution Pill. And I can imagine pretty much every tier name has been hit or at least milled using the effect of at least almost all of them, I would imagine. Going for Rulecalus, going for Dragosapelia, and uh, that's just going to be game on board right there. Hard to keep up sometimes with everything that's happening mill-wise, especially when they're milling that many cards. And of course, as we head into game two, a reminder to check out ImperiumDuelist.com at the link below. If you guys missed their Black Friday weekend sale, that's fine. You can still get stuff at discount prices using my discount code, WinterKills10 off at checkout. They've got mats, binders, deck boxes... Uh, dice, etc. Sleeves. Check them out at the link below, guys, if you haven't already. And again, don't forget to use the code at checkout. And uh, yeah, so getting into game two here, uh, we are going to see Dinos go first. Going to see him use Fossil Dig to grab what looked to be an Obi Raptor, and then we're going to see him pitch Miscellaneous Saurus. That's going to go ahead and bring out the Animadorn to use the Graveyard effect. Animadorn destroying Petita Ranadon. And that looks like it's going to go ahead and bring out an Obi Raptor. Setting up a pretty solid turn thus far and having access to Miscellaneous Source has got to feel pretty good. 
That way you don't have to worry about any tier limit effects getting in the way this turn. We're going to see him add UCT off of the OV Raptor. And yeah, also I just double checked as well. Agito and of course Calbeck as well say that you can send five more cards in the top of either player's deck if you have Exchange of the Spirit as well. And that is a you can. So you don't have to mill ten each time you hit them. It's optional if you want to mill the additional five. Um, so yeah, kind of insane. Like Exchange of the Spirit might as well definitely be a brick, but like if it's in the graveyard, you're just like winning. It, it, I mean, it seems like very much like a win harder card, honestly, at the end of the day. But it's still cool to see. See a gold sark banishing a giant rex going into the link rebo secure guard in a play to have that uh, link rebo as fuel for the uh, double evolution pill being a non dino target and then we're gonna see him bring out overtax quatlas here alongside the doka overtax quatlas probably just a little bit better right now than uct and that's kind of surprising to say since uct is insane um but you know Flipping the board face down against a fusion base deck really isn't the best when you think about it. So it has a spell trap negate and two monster negates at the ready. And not sure how much in the line of follow up, but we're going to see him activate Shiren. The thing that's bittersweet here about Shiren is, uh, you know, you could negate the in hand effect, but then it just triggers the effect of fusion in the grave. And uh, looks like he doesn't have a tier name in hand. So that's rough. He won't be able to trigger Shiren's Graveyard Effect. He'll activate Talents. Overtax will negate. He'll activate another Talent since Overtax negates the activation. We'll be able to take the Doka, allowing him to normal summon freely here for Diviner of the Herald, dumping a Gito, and let the milling begin. We see Droplet, Crime, Mystic Mine, Rainbow Bridge, and the Crystal Beast. And nothing really noteworthy for our Dino player there. Crime, I believe, can add back Banished Tears, so Whiffing there, and also the Garnet for the Crystal Beast engine also hitting the Grave too, which is unfortunate. Not hitting a single tier name, which is exactly what he needed. I mean, your best hope right now is linking off the Dolka and the Diviner into Murley. Well, actually, not Murley, uh, into Alpha, I was going to say, but you can't do that anymore because... The Diviner's level has actually already been modified to now be a level 6. And uh, can't do much with that right now. No elf plays to be made. And it looks like our tier player is going to concede after a very, very unfortunate opening. No tiers in hand outside of just the Shiren. And whiffing off a mil 5. And in game 3, it looks like his luck has turned all the way around. Also, a reminder, guys, check out my TCG Player affiliate link down in the description. Anytime you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase goes right back in the channel and helps out a ton. And, and to quote my man on the left here, every time I see a tier player open Instant Fusion, I feel a certain kind of way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can resonate with that. Maybe we'll get the DLC Part 2 for the last uh, ban list, not the last ban list, but the one before that. We'll get DLC 2 and they'll ban Instant Fusion this time. And leave us a note saying they're sorry um so now we're gonna go ahead and see a mill eight here and exchange of the spirit finds its way into the graveyard and uh, that means things are about to get a little bit out of control so a couple of things here to activate our new chain i see kelbeck and agito um so we can mill five off the kelbeck and then reset a trap in the grave since that's the secondary effect of kelbeck well the tertiary effect i should say um, it's not only the bounce, it's not only the mill five, but if exchanges the spirit into the grave, you can set any trap, any trap at all from your grave. And then Agito is the one that lets you mill five more. Um, yeah, sorry I don't have the, uh, the, the tertiary effects of some of the Ashizu cards memorized yet. So then we're going to see Agito mill ten. And, this, I mean, this has to be every tier name in circulation. So on a new chain, Shiren resolving here, just like, almost like... I almost like could see like a, a a runic tier deck, just like absolute deck out turbo. I mean, you're making your opponent mill twenty cards turn one, and then like, well, I mean, you could do ten off Kelbeck and then, well, ten, five off Kelbeck and then ten off Gios. So that's fifteen. So I mean, you deck them quite a bit. They're already out five cards from their opening hand. So if they're playing forty, they have half their deck left. I don't know. Just random thought I just had. Very intrusive thought. But going to Rule Kalos, going into Garura. 
setting up some very standard plays now resolving looks like to be Havness. going for one more fusion maybe for mud dragon but going for a second kikalos it looks like well i mean the kikalos was recycled off the rule Kalos, so i guess it could still be the same kikalos probably most likely is and we're gonna see him link for sprined say so that seems a little i was gonna say i was expecting uh, elf not sprined we're gonna see him go for uh, go for Sprine. You can of course dump Murley. So we chain link one. Sprine, chain link two guru, draw a card, dump Divine. I mean, I guess that gets uh, Diviner in circulation. And then activate Pearl Rhino. And then add a copy of Murley. Must already have Havness in hand. Well, we haven't even normal summon yet. I was gonna say, wait a second. Okay, we're adding Havness. Okay, no, so he did normal summon. A little confused there for a second. Not only at the uh, the normal summon of the Murley, but also him searching the Murley when Havness was probably the more correct thing to search. Yeah, I mean, probably all you need there. He has Crime Set, Rulkalos, and one other card, and Pearl Rhino, and plenty of Medoras and Keldas in the graveyard to shuffle back the opponent's entire deck back into their binder. And of course, exchange of the spirit being in the grave. Yeah, now we can return five. So Medora is going to return pretty much, again, every relevant dino in the graveyard. Can't get rid of them all, it looks like, but can get rid of a decent amount of them. It's back into the deck. For some reason, I keep thinking that the cards put them to the bottom. They just get shuffled back in. And still has a Kelbeck and or not Kelbeck, Keldo and in, Engrave to be able to use. Of course, another DD Crow 5. Now we're gonna see him activate Fossil Dig. Really not much hope here for our dino player, but you know, we might as well see how it plays out, right? Fossil Dig gonna go ahead and grab Miscellaneousaurus. Of course, it can be shut down at any moment by crime. Being the Omni Negate that it is in the back line. We'll see him activate Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Pretty good card to have here. And it looks like we're going to see him use Rolkalos to attempt to negate. And I know it has to send a tier. Looks like in response, he'll chain Misk. And then in response to Miscellaneous, he'll chain Crime. And sending Havness from hand as a result. Rule Collis, I'm pretty sure, has to send one, though. Unless he just sent itself and then brought itself back. But now we're going to see Havness resolve. That's going to bring out a Drago Sepelia. You can negate the activation, you destroy it, then send one tier one's card from your hand or face the field of the graveyard instead. So I guess he could have just sent off... Ah, uh, Rulkalos, and Rulkalos brings itself back, I guess. It's also, I think, his, like, first time, like, playing the tier deck. We're still relatively new to it. So, again, if he's not an expert tier player, cut him some slack, please. Fusion summoning is just not that easy nowadays, you know? It's a very tough summoning mechanic to get into. And it looks like we're going to see... After he activates Lost World, we're going to see him activate Keldo recycling some key cards in the opponent's grave but importantly some from his own one of them being a tier limit and that will trigger pearl the rhino pearl the rhino fact to go ahead and destroy the lost world and we've not normal summoned obi raptor yet but we're deciding we're gonna let it go through adding back miscellaneous source it was shuffled back in but the in hand effect has already been used there's only another way for him to get it back into the graveyard right now. Maybe there would be a possibility of being able to play. Unless Miscellaneous Horus is not once per turn. And I'm just, yeah, I guess not. So we're going to see him activate Miscellaneous Horus. And then in response, it looks like we're going to see Grave Keeper's Trap. Which is a card I need to uh, read here. 
While exchanging spears in the graveyard, your opponent cannot activate the card, the effects of cards in the graveyard or specimen monsters from the graveyard. So, no graveyard effect of miscellaneous swords here. That's pretty insane. Um, yeah. During the main phase, you can discard one card, add one gravekeeper's or earth fairy monster from your deck to your hand. Kind of broken, but uh, we'll see our dino player run over the sprined with the Yovi Raptor in past turn and we'll see our tier player lead with the gravekeeper's trap effect discarding a Guido to add what looked to be a Keldo and then a Guido effect to go ahead and mill five and then an additional five because we have the exchange of the spirit in the graveyard and then our dino player milling a bunch of non-useful cards right now and then we'll see some tier names resolve and this is probably just going to be game we're gonna see him go for Garura and then we're going to see Infusion lastly here for the Kaleido Heart. And that'll shuffle back the Obi Raptor into the deck. And that is more than enough for a game. So we will see our Tier Limit player take it 2-1 there. Not 2-0-ing. Dinos did have a pretty strong game too. But we'll see Tier take it 2-1. And that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this live match. I've got some online tournament replays coming up soon. Uh, that I did through Luxury, so be on the lookout for those. And last but not least, a huge shout-out goes to our Divine Level channel members who are Pony Stark, Cadillac 84, Justino, HH Cyber, and Misfit. Thank you guys so much, as always, for showing me kind and very generous support of this channel.